Okay, today we're starting a Google Apps for Financial Literacy, Project 1. Before we go any further, though, the first thing you need to do is make sure you have the textbook open. So I'm going to come over here to the textbook, and I'm going to right-click on that, and I click on Open Link in New Tab. The reason I did Open Link in New Tab is simply so that it would be in a, in a new tab. Now, if you're using your Chromebook, remember, you can you hold in most of the stuff we're doing today, you can hold down the Alt key. It says ALT. It's right next to a space bar as you click with the trackpad, and that should give you the right click menu just to let you know. So whenever I say right click, you should know that that's something that on your Chromebook, that's what you can do. OK, we're going to go down ahead, hit down now down here and open project number one. Now, before you go any further, you're going to come down here and you're going to open this right here. This is where you'll be doing your typing. Okay, so we're going to be doing this. Go ahead back and look at the book. And I'm going to jump way ahead here to page number, I believe I want to go to 15. If not, we can jump around a little bit. I'll find it. Nope, that's tomorrow's setting smart goals. So let's come back to this one that we're working on right here. And I'll have to, come on, come on, come on, come on. So I'm going to have to rotate this to make it work. So if you're doing this at home, we're going to go ahead and rotate it. But before you go re do too much, I do want you to go ahead and read some of this. Okay. Now I'm going to scroll this down on purpose. And we're going to plan your finances. So scrolling down. I'm going to rotate this one. I rotated three times in that. There we go. Project one. So this here, keep in mind that some of these questions like financial literacy are on the quiz at the end of the unit. So let's go to the next step here. The next step here says rename the doc. So we already did. Don't worry about renaming the document. We're really going to be starting here on step number four. And step number four says change the top, bottom, left, and right margins to it to one half inch, 0.5 inches. So I'm going to go over to my document. I'm going to click on my document. I'm going to get this out of the way a little bit because this is where we're going to be doing something. I'm going to click on file and I'll come down here all the way down to page setup. And I'm going to click on page setup. These are the margins. Now, what the margins are, those are the unprinted areas on the edge of a page. We typically don't write or print edge to edge on paper. It simply makes for a very unfriendly looking document. I'll mention the SEC several times in this class. That stands for the Securities and Exchange Commission. And in short terms, that, that's the branch of the government that regulates certain large corporations. And they've produced a writing book on how they want people to write. And they're, that's the one we, that I'm using here. And very simply, they say don't do that. There are other things that they tell us not to do, and we'll get to that later on. But we are going to reduce the size of the margin a bit. So we're going to make that 0.5. So that's making changing that to one half inch. By the way, I can also just press the tab key, 0 0.5, tab, 0 0.5. And then I can go ahead and click on OK. And you might notice that the cursor is a little bit closer to the edge at this point. So let's go back to the book and see what to do next. OK. On the first line of the document, insert a a two column by three row table. Now, a table simply means information organized in columns and rows. So I'm going to click on insert table and I'm going to go two by three. That X is usually pronounced by like in lumber, a two by four. This is going to be two by three. OK, let's see what they tell us to do next. In row one, merge the cells and change the background color to light gray. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my cursor to the center. Okay, one of the things that students do wrong when they're working with tables is they try very hard to get on the edges. That's the one place not to be right now. I just want you to be right there. I'm pressing and holding the left mouse button down. Dragging over and releasing. Now, both of these are selected. Now, I'm going to right-click in that selection. And I'm going to come down here until I find Merge Cells. And I'll click on Merge Cells. What that did is combine both of those cells into a single cell. It merged them. The next thing we want to do is apply a light gray background. 
Now for mine, I've got to click on these three dots here because of the size of my screen. I'm looking for a paint bucket that says background color when I float over it. Yours, you may not have to do that. It may be very easy to find. Drop arrow, and I'm going to go with light gray. There we go, light gray number one. But let's go back to our instructions. Okay. Format the word art, the word you art using the font of your choice. Okay, I'm just going to make a comment here. Word art in Google Docs does not work well. It, it just, it doesn't. Uh, word art in Microsoft Word works very well, but this is a place where Docs is quite simply weak. There's no other way to put it. It's weak. So we're just going to go ahead and put some text in there anyways. I want to do want to go down and take a look at what that's supposed to look like when we are done. So I'm just going to scroll down a little ways. And this is what it's supposed to look like when we're done. Okay. So let's scroll back up to where we were. Okay. So I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to click in here. And I'm going to use a font. Um, I, oops, wrong one. I want Brie Serif. If you absolutely do not have Brie Serif, uh, try another a similar font to like a Meriwether or something, but I'm we're gonna, I'm going to use Brie Serif here, okay? And you know, as funny as I've got to go look again to see what it was supposed to say. If you've been in my class, you know my memory is about that short. Financial fitness for teens, good. Okay, good. Okay. Now. Go ahead and center align that. Or is that? That's right there. Center align. I want to look at the instructions. I'm 90% sure that it's going to tell me to. No, it didn't. So I'll just tell you that we're going to use 60 right here. We're going to use 60. Good. Okay. Financial fitness for teams. We got that part down. Let's continue going. In row two, change the text alignment to justify and key the text as shown. Okay, this is another place where we're not doing what they say, is right here where it says to justify. And why? Because the SEC says not to. And I will show you what's going on there, though. So I did give you this, and that's why I said to make sure this stayed visible. We're just going to take the first two paragraphs right now, okay? So I'm going to grab these two paragraphs, just like this, Control-C. Okay, I'm going to come back over here to my document. I'm going to click right there, and I'm going to paste that in there, Control-V. Okay, a couple things about this. First off, you see that we've got an extra cursor down there. I'm going to backspace to bring that up. I'm going to select this. One thing I notice right off is this text isn't black. It's like this ugly gray, and this just has to do with something to do with Canvas when you copy from Canvas. So I'm going to come up here, click on the text color. I'm going to go ahead and make that black. Okay, much better. Okay, now let me show you what it means to justify it and why we're not going to do it. Okay, the problem is, if you look, you're going to notice that the spacing between the words changes as you're reading. It actually makes it harder to read that way. This is something that a lot of studies have been done on reading. And the extra, the space, changing the spacing between the words makes it harder to actually just read the document quickly. And so the result is we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to go ahead and we're going to left align this. Text should be, according to the SEC, should be left aligned with the right edge left ragged, like it is here. Okay, so we're, we've got that done. Now let's go ahead and look at what else we need to put in this box right here. Did we change this to black? I'm just going to double check. Yeah, we did. Okay, it just didn't look black to me. It still doesn't. Okay, the next thing we're going to do over here, we're going to go back to the book, is we're going to put some text in using these bullet points, okay? Do your research, set a budget, shop for the best deal. So I'm going to come right here. I'm going to click there, hit enter. I'm going to apply the bulleted list style. The bulleted list is the three dots and three lines right there, okay? And I believe the first one said do your research. Oops. 
Okay, you're about to see what a bad typist I am. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and look and see what the next one said. It said, set a budget. Determine how much you can afford to spend. Okay, and we're just going to type in all four. Great, so we got that typed in. We're just going to click right here. Enter, up arrow, buy new or used. And you'll notice that in the text, that's in bold. So I'm going to select that. Come up here to the B, click on it. Okay, and right here, enter, up arrow. And we're going to put in, build a good credit score. Again, that's in bold. Okay, looking at the material, we're done with this side. Let's go back and look and see what the instructions are telling us to do now. Okay, let's see here. We're not doing that. Sure, be sure to use the bolded list and bolded text as shown. Sure, in both columns. Okay, so we're going to now do the other side of that row. So I'm just going to scroll down here. And the stuff that goes right here, again, I gave that to you because I didn't want you spending all day typing. I wanted you actually to be reading this. And we're going to focus in on the formatting, Control-C. Come back over here to our document. And on this side right over here, Control-V. Good. We're again going to take that whole mess and we're going to make it black. Okay, oops, the A of the bar under it, click on black. And there is a small change. You see the cursor is still down there blinking, so I did hit backspace. Good. Now, let's come back over here. The importance of saving. Enter, up arrow. When I say up arrow, okay, just to let you know, I'm talking about the arrow keys that on a regular PC are between the number pad and the keyboard. If you look at your keyboard, you will see some arrows there. So that's what I mean by the up arrow. It's simply four little arrows left, right, up and down, okay? And of course, now I've got to look again to see what it said. The importance of saving. And again, that's going to be in bold. By the way, instead of clicking on the B, we can also on our keyboard just press Control B. Okay. And here we have another. Oops, don't click on that. Yeah, you see what I sort of did wrong there? I clicked on that. That's not where I want to be. I want to be at the W. Enter, up arrow. And here I'm going to type in, don't spend more than you earn. It's a trap that a lot of people can fall into. Again, we're going to go ahead and make that bold. Bold. Okay, let's go back and look at our instructions some more. Okay, in both rows, in column three, insert an image to help enhance the document. Center a line, resize the images as shown. Okay, and what they're saying is that they basically want them, you know, kind of like there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to find a couple of images. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click here. I'm going to select center align. Good. Now I'm going to click on insert and I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go search the web and over here for images, buy a car. Oops. And I'm going to save it. I like this one only because I have no reason to keep looking I'm going to click on this one. You might find one you like better. Insert. And wow, that's way too big. So I'm going to click on it. Now I'm going to go to a corner square. These squares are called sizing handles, okay? I'm going to go to a corner sizing handle. Make sure it's a corner. Otherwise, it messes with the ratio of the picture. It can make it look stretched out or really pushed or squished. So I'm going to go to a corner sizing handle. You notice how my cursor turns to a diagonal arrow. At that point, I'm going to press and hold the left mouse button down, and I'm going to sort of push up, and there it is. Okay, let's go ahead and get the next one. So I'm going to click in this cell here. Again, I'm going to choose center align. And what am I going to search on? The importance of saving. That sounds good. So I'm in there. Insert, image, search the web. The importance of saving.
and I'm going to Piggy. Okay, so I'm going to go with Piggy here, and I'm going to click on Insert, and I'm going to click on the image. I'm going to go to Corner Size and Handle. I'm just going to drag that up until it's about the same size as the other one. Now we're not done yet because it also said, coming back to the image here, to apply a light green border with a four point weight to both images. So let's go back to our project here. Okay. And up here we have border color. Okay. We're still on the image and that's why these showed up. You didn't see these before, but they're here now because we're on an image. If I were to like click over here, you notice it's gone. So I clicked on the image. I click over here and it said green. So I'm going to go with green. And it said four point. When we're talking about point here, we're talking about thickness of the line. It used to be that one point was the smallest that basically a, a printing press could print that, and would still be readable. It's not that case anymore, but that's where it came from. It's 178th of an inch. Hold on, 172nd. It doesn't really matter though because we're going to come down because point is the phrase used. So we're going to come down here to click on four point. You see that four point green border. Do the same thing to this one. I clicked on it, came up here, green border, four point, and we're done. Almost forgot a step. Yeah, don't shout yay. Okay. Um, remove the table borders. That, again, that's going to be a lot easier than it sounds. Let's go back to our paper, to our, because we're turning this in, we've made it like a little new sheet for it. What we're going to do now is go ahead and select one of these borders. I don't care which one. You'll notice that when I'm on the line, it turns to, to basically that line with the two arrows. Now you're going to right click. You can come down here to table properties. We want to change. It's super easy once you see how it's done. We're going to go to a table border, and right now you can see it's black. We're just going to click there, and we're going to choose white and click on OK. And it's gone. That was all there was involved in getting rid of that. Looks very professional. If you were turning this in, you know, doing something for a class, this would probably look good, assuming this is what you're supposed to be doing. But this is today's assignment. Now remember to go back to Canvas. And up here, you'll have a box that says submit. Remember to turn this in. A lot of students do their work and forget to turn it in. So make sure you go ahead and do that. And we'll get you with some other lessons later on.